Okay, I call the extrusion power menu and load the DXF file. There's a sample DXF file inside. Okay, as you see, uh, this is a profile, aluminum profile. The first thing I should do is just move it to the center. In this case, it's already in the center. And now uh, I don't need to scale it because uh, I assume that it's already scaled. So I go to the core and design. I click uh, one point inside and this automatically uh, creates, you know, the necessary part. For the tapered end part, I just add by one click. Okay, this is the end of my core. And in this case, I want to go down cylindrical. That's why I just select the option for cylindrical uh, cone. Change the radius a little bit. Okay, my uh, core end is finished. The next thing I should do is uh, select the die blank. Uh, there's a die blank library. You can add your own parts. And I simply select one. And just uh, I will just modify it. Once you select one of the parts, then you can always go and change diameter and the, you know, any kind of value. Okay, just enter a different height and diameter. The part is adjusted. Okay. All right. So that's why you don't have to have many parts inside. You can have just a few samples and automatically adjust it, you know, how you wish. All right, my die blank is, you see the radius is okay now. And next thing I should do is I will punch the die blank with the outer contour. Just click on the outer contour and it will automatically punch it through the uh, die blank. Okay, so also already done. And now uh, the welding chamber design. Um, in our case, the welding chamber is rather uh, simple and it's like a circular shape. Of course, it can be uh, any kind of uh, complex shape as well. But here, uh, for the sake of the video, I just I've selected a sample part, and so I will just you know design a circular uh, welding chamber. If your welding chamber is not circular, you have to uh, define it yourself by drawing on a two D work plane. Now I select the welding chamber and give it the depth. And automatically mill it uh, from the uh, die. All right, so my welding chamber is ready. And the next thing I should do is I can now just uh, start with the uh, mandrel uh, design. In this case, we have a symmetrical one, and uh, the extrusion power mandrel design uh, wizard opens up uh, here. Uh, I Actually, I should turn it upside down because uh, in our case, our uh, mandrel is the lower part and the die is the upper part. All right. Uh, so uh, the system automatically have chosen the values uh, for our uh, die. So the only thing I should do is change the height. All the other diameter values are automatically adjusted to the selected die. Okay, um, I don't actually need um, the uh, die part. I can just uh, switch it off. And now I go to the ports menu. And uh, we can always uh, look to the design in 2D sections or in a three dimensional preview. So I, we can have different kind of different uh, number of ports, you know, the six ports seven ports and I can play with the parameters. For the first uh, mandrel, I'm just taking the five port design and uh, the other parameters like height, the width of the web and we can do uh, now. So the first thing I should do is I should adjust the outside diameter of my ports to the outside diameter of the um, wedding chamber. So they are on top of each other. This is done, okay. And now I just uh, make the width of the uh, legs, the web legs, a little bit enlarge them for better stability. I play around uh, with the radii, and I can just uh, two-dimensionally 
uh, define uh, all the radius and later on once we uh, start creating the three-dimensional solid body uh, extrusion power uh, first tries to keep uh, the selected values if not he automatically reduces them uh, for yourself okay so here as well a little bit bigger maybe okay all right so and here the, we don't have too much place uh, for radius because we have five ports coming together so maybe i should not give a you know too big value but time will be okay we have three different three different types of web legs okay and they have they are from different shape in this video i will use two of those types um, so i've just again selected the 2d view and play with the parameters make uh, the web height a little bit uh, shorter okay as you see uh, all the parameters are driving the 2d geometry online so the changes uh, you automatically see you can anytime check in a 3d preview okay i just go down a little bit all right and here the radius between the web and the uh, the rip i can decide here maybe a little bit more up it will be okay all right uh, so the web uh, is okay as well next thing i should do is i go like one by one the porthole the porthole uh, the porthole has also a cross section and this cross section uh, we can define three different ones okay the most common uh, portal cross section types and uh, you can see them as well in 3d and in 2d so i switch off now the 3d views and go back to 2d again uh, every change what i do in 2d automatically affect the 3d views and so i can always have an updated preview All right the value are checked for you know uh, being logical and so i will now uh, make some changes change the angle a little bit all right for the first example i don't want to come too close to the outside of the radius so i make the portal a little bit uh, smaller and just give an angle so next thing is the core the core is uh, automatically adjusted uh, to the you know, core end part uh, I have designed in the beginning of the video in height and in diameter. So all I have to do is just play with the rest of the parameters and uh, make my core um, in the way that I, that I want. Just make a higher radius, larger radius and play with the angle a little bit. All right, so, okay. I can see it in 3D. I can see this one in 3D as well, and that one. So now I have a, you know, one a port in 3D quick view. So you can see uh, roughly how it looks like. I can even go and select a 360 degree view. Okay, and here except the blends, uh, which are uh, you know put while we are creating the 3D you know, body. You see roughly. As a you know, as a quick view, how your month will look like. Okay, now I'm ready. I'm happy with that. So I will start with creating the 3D solid. Uh, once I click on the button, extrusion power uh, uses uh, the parameters I've given, and first it tries uh, you know with the radius values I've given. If they don't won't fit, he will uh, optimize them and go you know down until he finds. Okay, this is uh, online now. The video is not edited, so it took like three or four seconds, and our first shape is ready. Okay, I can use the clipping plane, and you can see that the uh, blending are okay. All right, and now uh, if you wish so, you can just go and change parameters as long as you stay in the menu and just click uh, create overwrite and you'll overwrite okay so it seems to be okay but uh, of course in the video i want to show you uh, you know that we can do different variants so i will just keep uh, the most of the parameters and i will not close the menu but stay in the menu and just say keep old and change the 
you know the web type from tab number one to tab number three okay so i also want to change the number of ports from five to six okay and uh, so i will just make some uh, small changes uh, go down with the web uh, width and change the type to three type three has uh, you know the characteristics that it's bind it's, it's you know it uh, goes uh, with the end of the core it means that uh, when i make the it's always connected to the core end so if i make the core uh, the lower end uh, shorter okay is uh, this is the the portal i'm sorry i should go to the core and select the height value and make the height uh, shorter as you see when i make the height shorter the total height you know the web uh, automatically goes uh, together you know and now we have the curve can be as a line or in a stepped uh, you know form in 3d preview you can check again this is the portal as you see now my core is at the bottom shorter is looking uh, you know it is inside the mandrel hole okay so i will just create again a new variant and just keeping the old one so i will have uh, two mandrel parts on top of each other all right this is finished as well again four or five seconds for the complete part and now we have uh, two parts uh, laying on top of each other i just uh, confirm the menu and quit and so as you see this is the mandrel one and this is the mandrel two with different colors they're automatically differentiated and now uh, one has uh, six ports the other one has uh, five ports and uh, we can just uh, rotate the clipping plane we can just see you know how it is connected as you see and uh, the welding chamber uh, is not uh, has on the die side is a circular form and on the mandrel side the welding chamber is a different form because of the enforcement uh, ribs so we can just automatically adjust the uh, you see here are the enforcement legs so that's why the welding chamber has to be adjusted for doing this we have an automatic function we just call the adjust function select the die uh, extrusion power finds the welding chamber select the mandrel and as you see automatically adjusts uh, the uh, welding chamber of the die to the welding chamber of the welding chamber uh, you know contour of the mandrel okay so now as you see they, are, they both go hand in hand they are the same and we have done our design okay just to uh, give you a brief idea i will just move out one of the parts you know to the side by side okay so turn on the you know fast realistic view and as you see there are the different variants one with five one with uh, six ports with all the blending completed and welding chamber is okay. Thank you.